Hello and welcome to another Artist Opus tutorial. Today we are going to be dry brushing high quality red armour. Look at that, come out beautifully. We have covered these before on the channel and this is pretty much exactly, you know, to the month a year later. And this is the previous one. I feel we've upped our game since then and this one was worthy of a redux. So I've approached this guy with a view to improving the quality of it. A lot of this video is concentrating on the red and we are gonna be doing that for the majority with dry brushing. So if you're new to the channel, we do plenty of dry brushing here. And yes, this armor has been achieved without an airbrush uh, and with the majority of it, apart from one step being dry brushing. So let's jump into that and see how it goes. We are gonna concentrate on the red, but we will cover the details a little bit as well. In the outro, I'm going to cover more in detail finishes, which I think is a really important part of red. So how satin, matte or gloss your finishes and what that'll do to the depth of the color and stuff like that. Anyway, let's jump in. I have mixed up a color here. It's probably just gonna show as black on camera. It is isn't. It is not black. You can see there against the black background. I thought I would take you through how I worked out the color. So on the palette, we've got bad and black. We've got hold your blue, which is a favorite scale 75 paint of mine then we've got Mephisto on red and we've got Evil Sun Scarlet so you can see the difference between those on the palette hopefully and essentially I just wanted this this guy to be you know a little a little bit less you know super shiny hot rod red and a bit more war torn so what I was thinking was to take one of my favorite paints which is the blue and kind of add some interest to the red that way I like the coverage of um of my fist on red, uh, it's, it just works perfectly for me a lot of the time. It's a nice paint to paint with, it's quite strong. And then hopefully what we have here is the fact that, that a bad and black, actually by black standards, has really bad coverage, which makes it actually quite, I mean, you can see how much I'm adding in. That's not normal for a black. Um, there we go. So this is just the type of process I go through when I'm working out colors. Thought it might be interesting um, but basically the how weak a bad and black is and how well it is a kind of a, a, a darkener for other paints has allowed me to work out this color and then it'll be completely up to you um, you know if you wanted to add more blue to it I know that looks really extreme but that would be fine on the final model because we are going to put several stages over this um, but yeah I just thought it was an interesting way to let, let's start out our guy in the way that we want the final job to continue so a little bit more dark a little bit more war torn and quite cool hopefully. Got my dampening pad out. I'm using a small here. This is one of my older more beaten up smalls. I tend to rotate through my brushes and keep certain ones for base coats and certain ones for finishing stages. It's just a really good idea once you've gone through a couple of cycles with them. It makes a lot of sense to me. So this was our base color. We've already mixed that up super fast. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is add in a little bit more red and now we're just gonna lay a foundation. So the base color is a one-to-one -one mix of black to hold your blue to the Mephisto on red. Make sure my brush is wetter than normal. These are beginning stages though, and this is, if you're gonna concentrate at any stage on not building up texture, it is this stage. So it's fine to hit pretty much every single surface on the model. Just make sure that it isn't thick. See, I've got quite a lot out of my brush there. Just gonna go back to the dampening pad rather than to the palette first. We're not looking to build up excess texture. We never are. This is so dilute though that you don't have to worry too much about, you know, removing it or being obsessive about quantities or anything like that though. If you have the option to not have a gun in front of your guy, then by all means don't. And in fact, this guy, because he's a push fit, has allowed me to prep for that. So that's gonna give me brilliant access to his chest piece which you know, as a blood angel is a fairly important part of the model. If you're wondering why my palette's changed color, I've just put a few reds down on it because I think it's gonna help us better see what's going on on this guy specifically. So really pleased with that color overall, we're just gonna add a bit more of a fist on red to it now. So we're gonna repeat these steps. The really important amount is how much is on the brush and how wet it is. So that's the thing that I'm gonna be testing kind of obsessively before I go to the model. It's the dilution of the paint and how much paint is on the brush. Dampening pad will be getting use, and as ever, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test beforehand. You can test on the base, because it will have been primed and picked up some of the same colors. Let's rock onto the dude, so. Keeping the pressure light at first. Now, this is already way faster 
than most other styles of painting out there. So there's no need to rush. It's very easy to think that because you're dry brushing, you need to go super quick. That is not the case. So don't worry about it. Take your time. My dry brushing, I try to keep it so it's not going in one particular direction. You know, that's, that's often why I use buffing or circles. It's an extremely effective method. And we, we are trying to, you know, get the type of effect that maybe people would associate with airbrushing, but we're going to be doing it texture based. So the recesses should stay dark, which is one of the lovely things about using dry brushing on power armor, especially. It's important in these early stages to really try and get into, you know, every angle, every armpit, all of that stuff. It matters less for the next ones. You just want to make sure that your shadows, you know, aren't black. They are the color that the model should be. And then you can get away with it in recesses as long as it, you know, it's from your base coat. Following steps doesn't matter nearly so much. With that stage done, what I'm going to do here is actually just set the small to the side um, and I'm changing brush. Now there's a number of reasons for that. Mostly it's because I want to get a little bit brighter and unless I stopped, clean this and let it dry, I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, you could absolutely swap to another small, but for people who've got the set, I thought I'd swap to medium. As I just mentioned, you know, uh, we're not so worried about hitting all of the recesses perfectly at this stage. So going to medium may seem a bit odd, but it does make sense for that reason. So what we're going to be doing now is going to be rekindling our mix. Obviously, it's got more pure Mephisto and red in there. We're going to keep a tiny bit of the blue. And we're really going to make sure to dilute this. Uh, both Abaddon Black and Holger Blue are pretty wet paints. Uh, Mephisto on Red is not nearly so wet in my experience. If anything, I'm going to over dilute, uh, especially at this beginning stage, because it's also quite a strong color. So let's see how this looks. Let's test it on the back of my thumb. And then let's pick somewhere that isn't too important. Let's go for his ankle to see how this is looking now. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna continue like that. It's gonna take patience, this step. This is probably the longest step. Um, I'm looking to build up what is a much brighter color, but I want to do it subtly. So, you know, there is no rush. In comparison to normal painting or layering or whatever, you know, this is still incredibly quick. So don't stress yourself, don't worry. Just uh, pop on an audio book and, you know, five minutes later, you'll have done something that probably would have taken you 15 minutes with any other method that I can think of. Do make sure to get it from every angle as well. It's really important, particularly from above now. I'm going to be concentrating more from the top of the model the further we go through the technique because I want him to be you know, lit from above or, or behaving like he's been lit from above. So we are really starting to build up some pretty decent high quality texture there. I have had a couple of mistakes I shall show you. One, I've scraped the underside of his knee with the ferrule of my brush when I was going too aggressively uh, is a bit of a um, uh, something to watch out for when you're doing you know heavy dry brushing with a very light amount of stuff on your brush and then the other one is i just went in physically heavy on this hand here real shame as it is at the front of the miniature and it's going to get a lot of attention so i'll do everything i can to try and keep that area subtle um, with future steps i tried to buff it out but it has built up a bit more texture than i'd like i said you're going to get sick of it do not rush that is you know it is such an important part when painting like this. So next step is to mix in a little bit of Evil Suns to Mephisto. Now, even though these paints aren't worlds apart, as far as how this starts looking on the model, this is the step where I think things will really step up. So let's see how it goes. As ever, you know, removing too much is better than too little. And we are really going to be concentrating on the upper parts of the model, especially when we start, you know, when I start here, when I go to the dampening pad, which of course will wake things up a little bit. I'm going to start those steps towards the top of the model. That's definitely too wet, but luckily we've diluted enough. So we'll just kind of work it out. Top of the pack, you know, all these upward facing areas, they're the ones we want the reddest. You can start being directional with your strokes if you wish, you know, like hitting the knee pads from above, stuff like that. But it's entirely up to you. You know, it's power armor, it's in the future, paint it however you like. So when the brush gets um, a lot more subtle with less paint on it, that's when I feel that I can go everywhere and do my buffing. And this is when you need to be careful of not knocking stuff with your ferrule. So I'm gonna be a bit more mindful of that as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a higher proportion and keep going, keeping stuff really subtle on the head of the piece here that hasn't made, he's not made a, sh a show yet, but 
he's only being touched when I know that I've got exactly the right amount on the brush. We're on to the pure evil sun stage. It's just as I said it would be, but I wanted to show you what this is doing on the model specifically. So areas like this trim, it should really start picking out quite nicely. So this all over, especially when, it's get, when, it, when it gets light, I do wanna be hitting every edge. Now I'm gonna be rolling the brush as we cover often. You know, if you want to hit a particular edge, use this motion. You'd be surprised how specific you can be on all these edges to be caught and to stand out a little bit at least. This step is 100% optional and we've already got some pretty cool stuff going on due to how you've approached this model since the beginning. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a little bit of work into exaggerating it. And what I'm gonna do that with is the extra small, some subtle work hopefully, and a little bit of Holger Blue. Now, the reason I'm doing this here and not at the end is if and when I do slip up or cock up with this, because I will, and it's quite a scary technique, it just means that our following stages are gonna do a good job of softening that. So I'm mixing a little bit of Holger with our red. We've got a very similar color to the one that we began with, but it's just a little bit darker. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to use this to buff and shade in the recesses a little bit. I'm gonna wait until a bit more has worked off the brush on my finger until we know it's safe. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick undersides, areas that I feel should be darker, and I'm gonna go in and spend a little bit of time buffing them out. It normally takes a bit of time to get the right ratio going on here right dilution but you know just test on the undersides be careful don't be heavy-handed and you should manage to get somewhere pretty tasty you could do this with a wash as well and I might end up doing that myself in a bit but for now I'm just going to kind of smudge these in I'm contouring my space marine you can see here how coherent that looks now we did the dark section and then we've highlighted it just buffed it up again it's picked out the edges so if we go to one that that hasn't been touched yet on the back of this one. I think uh, this is the type of thing it's always really helpful for someone to be able to see just to make sure you know exactly what's going on. So we've got a fair bit of orange in here. This is Troll Slayer Orange. It's not particularly strong and that's part of why we're using it. We are going for, you know, something su subtle, something buffy. And if you don't find the Evil Suns is getting the courage that you want, what you can do is you can just jump to the Mephiston and mix it with the orange. It really shouldn't matter too much um, as long as the orange is the majority color in there. That's, that's what matters at this stage. So this is how we're looking. You can see the dark, um, the darkness there. I think that's been pretty successful. And actually, I really do think this would benefit hugely from a wash. It could look pretty amazing if we popped those recesses and those uh, little panel lines and stuff like that. So yeah, this is, um, this is it. Just Charles Slayer all over. Concentrate on the edges. You can mix it with Mephiston if you prefer to Evil Suns or, you know, any red, whatever it is that you're using. Just make sure that you remove a huge amount of it before going to the model and, you know, be willing to use some nice specific rolling to make sure that you catch particular edges. I've actually changed paint brand, but you could absolutely, I've just gone for something that's a little bit more pastel -y. You can see these are pretty much the same color though. So you could use Fire Dragon Bright here. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, yeah, so you could use Fire Dragon Bright. I've gone for a Pro Acryl paint though, just that orange. And what I'm doing is stepped back to the big brush for the same reasons as last time. And we're mixing a little bit of the Pro Acryl in with the red that we've got on our brush. And we're gonna very carefully buff this up you know baby steps you can stop this at any stage you like you know it depends how much detail you want to put on uh, you might just not like the look of going to an orange i get that a lot of people um have you know fairly strong opinions about red myself included i just wanted this one to have quite a bit of depth test it elsewhere and buff it up now we do have to be careful because this is pastel you are going to get it picking on grains a little bit i don't mind that too much for this model in this instance but you know it's completely up to you so you can dilute further to get around that or you could just not go this bright that would be pretty easy I want this guy to be pretty um pretty lit from the top though as I am trying to kind of suggest that he does have an angle of lighting and that he gets dark low down 
So if you do find ever that you've gone too orange and you don't particularly like the tone of how you've been, you want to bring it back to red, I have a really simple method for you. This also adds a bit of depth to the armor, which is great. So I'm using uh, Blood Angels Red here. You know, no surprises there. You could use Flesh Terrors if you wanted something a bit deeper though. I really, really, really rate this one. I think it's amazing. Anyway, what I've done is I've just diluted it a little bit with water. Quite a lot with water actually, probably about 50-50. Then you're taking a lot of the excess off your brush and I'm using it completely as a glaze. So this is, this is not pooling in recesses anywhere. This is coating the entirety of the panels. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna pull them a little bit more into the ready spectrum than the orange spectrum. Whilst, you know, it's not gonna delete any of the depth that we've added and actually, if anything, it should add to those shaded areas. So he's gonna be coated in that and that should really kind of pull him together. I really like this, like now that I've coated it in it, I think it's got a lot more depth to it and it is more in the red spectrum for sure. I've just put down a little bit of a uh, panel lining wash in the recesses. It's just a mixture of our Holger Blue and Abaddon Black. I've dotted that bit in there and that should help push the contrast. Really pleased with how this is overall. Uh, it's now, <laughs> stop procrastinating and do all the boring steps. So I'm gonna undercoat the metals and all of that type of stuff. But um, overall, the effect here we've got is really good. Something that I just want to note is because of where we've made the model dark with the smudging blue stage, these rivets are really going to pop out in a lot of the places where they are on the mini. So um, pretty excited for how that's going to look. And I am actually tempted to do the piping silver. Normally I just make it dark, but um, we'll see how it looks when the rest of the areas have been sectioned out just to see, you know, what is the best way to go about that. Okay, so just fairly normal base coating. As normal, I've mixed my Retributor armor with some brown. In this case, I've gone for quite a warm one. It's a favorite of mine, it's doing more brown. So pop that in there. I just wanted to show you, uh, not that it's something hugely special, but the way in which I'm gonna highlight the black gray section of his bolter. So I realized that I should have done this before I started painting the silvers, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna buff this up basically. What we should build up to here is a lovely soft, uh, slightly edge highlighted kind of tone. And then I can wash it down with black if required. I've actually grabbed Slanesh gray of all colors for my next step. Bit of a weird one, but I think it's, um, it's quite a soft one. And that's what I'm going for. It is also gonna get washed down, definitely. So just highlighting up his insignia. You may wonder why I've only touched one bit of it. And that's because whenever you're painting something like this, you may as well use push fit for what you can. So I'm gonna paint the bits that you can see easily. <laughs> so that's gonna to be top of his head, top of the right wing as well as it is a little bit more open there. But uh, yeah, there's no point painting any of the stuff that's gonna be permanently hidden behind that arm well. I just cycle through Retributor and I'll add a little bit of silver increasingly to it. I'll just use the Lego Game Air Silver and we'll get this looking nice and shiny. So in order to keep that chest plate kind of Shiny and attention grabby. I'm using a bit of cryptic armor shade gloss. It's diluted a fair bit here. What we're gonna do here, I'm using an M1, but any detail wash is okay. I'm gonna drag it towards the recesses or push it towards the recesses and end my strokes there. And what this should do is kind of exaggerate the depth in those wings by kind of contouring it. Facing wise, I'm just using some Ingrelium Badland. Uh, I've hit this with a layer of Monitorium Varnish just to protect it, and then a light dusting of Chaos Black as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base coat this and we're gonna keep that kind of blue theme that we've got going on by mixing blue with black for the base coat. And the other thing that I want this to achieve is because the model is slightly satin, because of the various stages of kind of all over wash or other stuff that we've done on it, I want the base to be incredibly matte so that there's a nice uh, juxtaposition between this shiny looking armor and then his very, very arid, dry basing environment. I'm gonna keep it pretty toned down color wise as well and let the, uh, the red kind of pop off it. So 
So at this stage, uh, I often do this about 80% of the way through and 90% of the way through. I'm going to pop him off this, put him on his real base, and that will give me an idea of how it's going to look overall. And, you know, that might affect some final decisions that I make on the model. I'd rather leave myself with the ability to be flexible than, you know, decide everything and complete it 100% and then put him on there and realize that I need to adjust something. Great, so that's exactly what I was going for in terms of you know, the overall feel of the piece. My Agrelan Badland has shrunk away from the edges a bit, so what I'm gonna do is his front facing angle is gonna be the one with the most of the basing material right to the very edge of the base, because I just prefer it aesthetically, probably around here. We've done a load of the base coating on the model. It's starting to look really tasty. What we're gonna to come to now, I really like that armor. I think it's uh, pretty nice to see something that looks a little bit more uh, dark. Face-wise, we're looking pretty tasty. I popped down a quick wash under his eyes. The reason for this is that I want to suggest some kind of lighting here, and I find that easier on a darker background. So what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of warp stone glow initially, dilute it right down. I've got a tiny brush here, I've got a double zero. I'm carefully gonna glaze this under his eyes. This is completely optional, of course. Some people might prefer to avoid it in case you cock it up. My approach with this type of thing is to do several quick, thin layers and it's much easier to, uh, if you do make a mistake, then you're making a semi-transparent mistake, and that makes things a lot easier. So I'll build this up with a few more stages of glaze, and then we'll hop into some moot green. Um, I'm not gonna use monuments equivalent of moot green because it's just really potent, and it's a bit scary when trying to glaze with it. So I'll use GW's paints that have slightly lower coverage. Okay, so I've got a slightly less dilute version for the final highlight. Just move green in here. There we go. Adds so much personality doing that. I might have gone a little bit heavy there. You can always glaze it back if you do feel that you have been. But now we get to attach this to our dude's body and hopefully this should add a massive amount of personality. I bang on about this in every Space Marine video, but it is something that I feel very strongly about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna position this guy's head now with the the later models, a load of them come with pins for their head to be pointing in one direction. I think that is a dreadful idea <laughs> and you should immediately chop that pin off uh, when you are picking, you know, how to attach this to your miniature. Pop it in. I pop it in with a little bit of super glue, even if I normally use plastic glue for this, super glue is fine. And then essentially what I do is I just play with it and I pick a pose. So this guy here is looking pretty cool. What directly, you know, do we want him, I think, especially given that there's pr there's a pretty good sight line you know i think about this for thumbnails but you should think about it for models as well the angle that the camera is at now is a pretty good sight line through to his core chest here he's kind of covering it and from here you know even the gun is angled in this direction so i want everything that as is as cool as possible to be um you know to be coming in this direction i'll pick his facing to be that as well i think looking down often looks a bit evil but just tilting your head to the side a bit you know, that dude is on a mission now, he's not just standing there like a robot, and I think it makes a huge difference to how things look overall. Looking good. So if you're wondering uh, what the back and forth was there, I simply went back and softened things multiple times with Microsoft further, and that just helps, um, especially if you let it dry between it, it just helps it adhere slightly closer to the surface. So. It's not super smooth because it's not gone onto a, a perfectly smooth surface. But what we can do here is give this a varnish and then I probably will actually do a little bit of, um, I'll glaze the contrast over it again to make sure it's coherent with the, the finish of the rest of the model and that should really help tie it together. Um, if it doesn't quite work at that point, you can always paint it a bit or indeed weather it and that should help a little bit too. So I'm actually using the max amount of varnish here from Green Stuff World. If you want to see what this stuff is capable of, <laughs> this section of my palette, which is darker than the night, should uh, give you a good impression. It's um, it's potent stuff. What I will be using that for is I'll varnish down the shoulder with it and then I'll be able to bring it, uh, bring it up again with the wash. But also these sections where I put PVA around the feet, which you can see there, I'm going to um, varnish the entirety of the base because I want it ultra, ultra matte and this is the perfect product for it. So I'm going to dilute it quite heavily with water for the shoulder pad. It seem a bit weird, but I'm effectively glazing this varnish over here. 
only wants a super thin layer. There we go, so that should uh, hopefully hide that PVA a bit. I wanted to use the PVA, normally I would pin it, but a lot of people ask um, what to do if you don't have pinning equipment. Uh, the kind of PVA dribble underneath is a pretty good way to get a very, very solid bond to your base. I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of the colors that we've used for our basing. So I'm just washing it in the areas that would be getting the heaviest coverage. What I'd like to do is use a combination of this to make sure it hits the recesses and then dry brushing to make sure it looks powdery. Um, the issue is with the dry brushing, it's not gonna collect where it would collect naturally, which is gonna be everywhere that's recessed. So I think a uh, belt and braces approach is definitely warranted here. And then while I'm here, of course, what we can do is that area where the PVA is looking a little bit suspect, we can just bring it in line with the rest of the base fairly carefully. I think that's been super successful. Look at the difference that's made to the model. You know, we've got a satiny finish to extremely matte now. You know, this stuff always looks powdery. What I'm gonna be doing here is I've got a old uh, Tamiya cotton bud or Q-tip if you're American. And these things are amazing. I use them for cleaning my airbrush because they don't molt. They're absolutely phenomenal. What I'm doing is I'm just knocking back a bit of the a bit of the wear and tear that I've put on, on the edges to make it look like it has been knocked off the edges during, you know, use. Now, you do have to be quite careful with this. You don't want to remove anything but the dry brushing. You do have to be fairly physical to do that. So it's a bit of a fine line, but I think it's worth it. Because this should really, you know, a lot of these areas should have been kind of scuffed clean, leaving other stuff in the recesses. So let's see how successful this is. Nice, so he has properly been in the wars. Um, all that remains is for me to kind of bring this super matte shoulder pad, I'm not sure if that shows up on the camera, but bring it in line with the rest of it. The transfer's not been completely perfect, but mine often aren't, so uh, there we go. Just gonna bring a tiny bit of our lighter grays into the recesses. I don't want the weathering to uh, steal attention on this guy, but I do want people to know that it's been done pretty precisely. So giving ourselves an excuse for a fine line there in the recesses, I think is gonna do quite a bit for kind of, you know, just adding a little bit of pop down lower on the figure that we wouldn't get otherwise. We are done. So this guy I feel has been hugely successful. I do feel it's a real upgrade from the previous one we had, and I'll tell you the reasons why. I'm also gonna cover the satin matte thing that I touched on in the intro of the video, and I've, you know, I've dipped into throughout. So this guy here, his armor is slightly satiny finished. That's largely because of the glaze we use, but also because we've used a lot of Games Workshop paints on there, and they do tend to have a satin finish. So what I really like about him is we've got, he goes from lighter, to darker top to bottom in terms of the red. And then he goes from uh, weathered and matte to less weathered and less matte. I'm talking about weathering, not chipping and battle damage, but you know, the ground, his environment, the dust working its way up his legs. He goes from more matte to less matte uh, bottom to top. So what you've got is armor that looks pretty shiny and it looks more shiny up high and more dusty down below, brilliant. And then we've put him on that base. Now this is a tip that I got, not directly from, but from looking at the work of Gareth Nichols, who is an extremely talented painter and has been for literally decades. Really, really talented, especially known for his super smooth glazes painter. And he often put his Blood Angels on a very dark base, or at least a desaturated, bold and simple base. And that just made the red really, really shine and speak for itself. So I kind of have tried to touch on that here. Nothing wrong with doing other bases, but you know, for this one, I thought that was very appropriate. Anyway, the finish of the model. So. With red, um, a lot of the time, if you don't have it as super matte 
um, especially if you're not doing some crazy, you know, true like non-metallic metal style painting on it. Not true metallic, the exact opposite. It's really helpful just to add some depth to it. And I've done that by adding the wash in and having the blue in the recess. There's a number of ways you can achieve that. But I think, you know, I could have maybe even gone as far as giving it a satin varnish, which we did do with this guy um, back in the day. And that just helps add a little bit more history and depth to the red. And it pulls it back from being orangey to being deep ready, which I think is it's my personal preference, at least for reds, generally speaking. So I'm really pleased with how he's come out. Do consider matte, satin or gloss during your painting and just view it as another type of contrast. So, you know, if you want to make your cloth look super clothy and soft, you can hit it with a matte varnish. I use this one. AK have got an equivalent as well and numerous manufacturers have one. This seems to be pretty good, actually. It's nice to work with. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're not already a subscriber, then please do subscribe. Hit that bell notification to be notified for future content. And let us know down below if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future in tutorials or in terms of education or anything like that.